Well, there's no sign uh, that an indictment has been filed from the Manhattan uh, grand jury. They did hear from a witness today, uh, David Pecker, who is the uh, former publisher of the National Enquirer. Uh, he has actually testified twice. They've heard from nine witnesses this grand jury has. Mr. Pecker has appeared twice. Uh, they're expected to vote on an indictment soon, but there's no indication yet that that's happened. Meantime, uh, the House committee chairman uh, sent a letter uh, to the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, the potential criminal indictment of a former president of the United States by an elected local prosecutor of the opposing political party and who will face the prospect of re-election implicates substantial federal interests. If state or local prosecutors are able to engage in politically motivated prosecutions of presidents of the United States, former or current, for personal acts, this could have profound impact on how presidents choose to exercise their powers while in office. Let's start there with our panel. Fox News chief political analyst, Britt Hume, Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina. Uh, Trey, you know you, you know this well, but uh, the district attorney said thanks, but no thanks as far as lawmakers having anything to say about where, where his prosecution is going. But it does seem like uh, there's been a slowdown, at least what we thought was going to happen with this grand jury. Yeah, Brett, and if you're struggling to get uh, an indictment uh, from the grand jury, then you have no chance at a, at a successful prosecution. This is by far the weakest of the four uh, investigations that the president is going through right now. Uh, having said that, uh, do not commit the crime uh, for which you now serve the sentence. Uh, that's from the Count of Monte Cristo, and the president should read that. If you're innocent, Act innocent. Do not talk about death and destruction and do not tweet baseball bats with the district attorney. Act innocent. Th legally, factually, statute of limitations wise, the president's in good shape here I as long as he doesn't commit other offenses while he's trying to prove his innocence. You mentioned that uh, tweet. It was a Truth Social post. We'll put it up. Uh, the pictures obviously raised a lot of eyebrows. Uh, the president with this baseball bat and the district attorney, uh, Alvin Bragg. And in this interview with Sean Hannity, uh, the president went on to respond to that and kind of explain it in his words. Uh, Britt, we'll see what else uh, comes out of Sean's interview tonight at 9 p.m. Yeah, Brett, we will. I, you know, I think about this case that this is the president. Um, emphasizing one grievance after another. Now, now, what this president needs, not so much to get the nomination, he might be able to get that with a string of plurality uh, showings and primaries, but to, to get the presidency back, he's going to have to get people that did not vote for him in, in 2020 to vote for him in 2024. And I don't, does any of this, no matter how illegitimate this prosecution is, does any of this stuff uh, help him? Him going on and on about it, belly aching about it everywhere he goes. Look, it's. An, I think uh, you know the prosecution may be no good. The others may not may fail, but is talking about them going to get him elected by people who didn't vote for him in 2020? It's a good question. It is indeed. Uh, Leslie, he held a rally over the weekend in Waco, Texas. Uh, turnout was was high, as it, it often is for uh, former President Trump. Uh, and he went after a number of times, a number of different ways, uh, the yet to announce for the presidency uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis by praising who he ran against. Take a listen. Look, whether you like him or not, Charlie Crist, it was very successful. He was a Republican at the time. When you look statistically at how he did on COVID, not well at all. In the case of Florida, they unfortunately did shut it down. They shut down the beaches. They shut down everything. So now that people are finding out about what happened, they're saying, man, he's dropping like a rock. But... Um, to be fair to the Florida governor, I would play this other string of sound bites about the former president praising the governor. Take a listen. We still, right now, are able to meet the current demand. So you actually have more testing than you have demand? Right now, yep. It's a fantastic thing. Now you're at your lowest numbers, and you're open, and you didn't close, and you're it's just amazing, right? It's great. You guys aren't even open yet. What the hell is going on with your state? You know, Florida's open, all this. Florida had a surge, great governor, surge, went down. <laughs> so there's tape for everything, Leslie. 
<laughs> well, first of all, is there a full moon tonight? Because I actually agree with both Brett and Trey, which is, I don't think ever happened on almost 100% of what they said. But regarding what Donald Trump said, is it surprising when a politician or somebody who is the former president named Donald Trump who flip flops on a person or what they say? I mean, this is obviously a pattern of behavior when somebody is in the good graces of the former president, he praises them. And then when he views them as not being in good graces or an adversary, or in this case, a potential opponent for the presidency, uh, like the governor in Florida, well, then Florida was great until it wasn't. And, and, and that's not surprising at all. I, I think more problematic were some of the things that, you know, we've heard about when we've seen the bat, which was taken down, and some of the other rhetoric, which is making people uncomfortable. And I would agree with Britt 100 percent on that. This is not going to bring people that actually even voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and turned away because they didn't like the lack of decorum in the presidency or his style. This is certainly not going to bring those people back in the fold or people that never voted for him into the fold at all. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about this shooting today, Trey, in um, Nashville and the three kids, three adults killed. Obviously, the White House, uh, the president then calling for an assault weapons ban in reaction uh, to that. Uh, we should mention that the stats, you know, are compiled. Uh, the definition of mass shootings varies, but it's, it is significant that we see these again and again and again uh, already this year. Yeah, I was a gun prosecutor, Brett, and I, I'm speaking only for myself. I, I'll give up every right that I have if it keeps kids alive, if it keeps children alive. So show me the law that is causally linked to stopping mass shootings, and I will sign up for it. Uh, but I haven't seen it. So, so look, let's bury the children before we politicize it. Show me the law that is causally linked to stop the next mass shooting and then put me down for it. Brett, final word. Well, he's identified. Trey identifies the problem. There's always been a failure to connect the next gun law to the last shooting. And that's where we are, and that's where we've been on this for a long time. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, the time goes on and these bills don't pass because they wouldn't do the job. Panel, thanks very much.